Hi everyone. Let's go over what happens to the voltage-gated ion channels during action potentials, as well as the overall ionic conductance. I have drawn a basic diagram here already of the ion channels in the membrane. This blue channel is going to be the sodium channel, while this pink one on the right is the potassium channel. The top represents the outside of the cell, and the bottom here is going to represent the inside of the cell, or the cytosol. These green flaps at the top represent the activation gates of both the sodium and potassium channels, while this little ball at the bottom represents the sodium inactivation gate. I have also drawn the corresponding graph of voltage versus time on the left. Let's start with the resting state. When no action potential is firing, both of the activation gates are closed, while the sodium channel inactivation gate is opened. No ions are flowing through these channels, and the voltage remains at roughly negative 70 millivolts. During this initial depolarization here caused by graded potentials, a very small portion of sodium channels would open their activation gates to prepare for the depolarization phase at threshold. At rising phase, or depolarization, all of the sodium activation gates eventually open due to the depolarizing membrane. Here, there is a positive feedback loop. The more the membrane depolarizes, the more sodium channels that open up, which causes more sodium to go into the cell and further depolarize the membrane. The sodium activation gates open very quickly, which aids in the sharp increase in membrane potential. This rapid depolarization can be seen on the voltage graph, where the voltage very quickly ramps up from threshold. The voltage goes to about positive 40 millivolts at the top here. At falling phase or repolarization, the time-dependent sodium inactivation gates start to slowly close. At the same time, the potassium activation gates open. This causes potassium to start flowing out of the cell, as well as sodium to stop entering the cell. Both of these result in a rapid repolarization, where the membrane potential becomes more negative. In the refractory period, or after hyperpolarization phase, the activation gates of the sodium channels close, while the potassium activation gates remain open. This causes the slight dip below resting membrane potential seen here called the undershoot. The voltage at the bottom here is roughly negative 90 millivolts. After some time, the inactivation gates of sodium channels start to slowly open back up, while the potassium activation gates close. This allows the membrane potential to return to resting state. This step also officially resets both of these channels so that they are ready for the next action potential. The slow reopening of the sodium inactivation gates allows for the unidirectional movement of action potentials down a neuron. They inactivate the sodium channels so that they wouldn't become depolarized again. Now let's look at the whole process altogether. At resting state, both activation gates are closed. Sodium activation gates quickly open in rising phase, and sodium ions flow into the cell. At falling phase, the sodium inactivation gates close, while the potassium activation gates open. This stops sodium ions from flowing into the cell, while allowing potassium ions to flow out of the cell. During after hyperpolarization, the sodium activation gates start to close as well. And the closing of potassium activation gates and reopening of the sodium inactivation gates 
brings us back to the resting state. Let's see what this means in terms of ionic conductance. In rising phase, there is an increase in sodium ion conductance due to the opening of the sodium channel. In falling phase, the closing of the sodium inactivation gates causes a rapid decrease in sodium ion conductance. Meanwhile, the opening of the potassium channels causes an increase in potassium ion conductance. At after hyperpolarization, sodium ion conductance is back to resting state, while potassium ion conductance is still above resting value due to the channels still being opened. At resting state, potassium ion conductance is finally returned to resting value due to the closing of the potassium channels. Potassium ion conductance at resting state is maintained to be greater than sodium ion conductance. This is due to the potassium leak channels which are also present in the membrane.